Wednesday, December 6th, at approximately 3.32, and we'll do a roll call, please. Council Member Chu? Here. Council Member Way? Here. Council Member Morrison? Here. Vice Mayor Hilmer? Here. And Mayor Haroff? Here. So for those who are able to stand, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Justice for all. <clears throat> and with that, we'll get back on the agenda. Agenda item number two is presentations and proclamations. I see that we have none. Agenda item number three, public comment, uh, only for matters that are not listed on the agenda. Time for members of the public to address the city council regarding items that are not on the agenda or that are listed as part of the consent calendar. Do we have any members of the public who would like to speak at this time? Seeing none, uh, we'll close the public comment period uh, and go to agenda item number four, approval of the consent calendar. Unless any members of the council want to pull one of these items off the consent calendar, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move the consent calendar. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. And with that, we'll go to agenda item number five, the city manager's oral report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and council members. Uh, first, I wanted to uh, note that we have gone through a small little bit of rain and one king tide cycle, and we had a few spots that were challenging, particularly in the marina neighborhood, but um, as a whole, we went through that pretty well. It's a reminder that everyone should uh, start, particularly if you live near Corte Madera Creek, start to prepare for the wet season and particularly pay attention to when there are king tides, those high tides, because those rain in combination with those tides can cause us problems in our streets. Um, second, I have an exciting announcement. Um, just received the uh, memo from the Bank of Marin, who is the bank that's uh, serving as one of the managers and executors of the Zimmer Trust. And uh, the final disbursement is ready. Uh, you may recall they held back, as is often the case, they held back a portion of the estate to finish through the procedure uh, in terms of estate taxes. And uh, we've learned we're going to receive another $90,000. Um, that means the total trust donation to the city of Larkspur for the library will be uh, $750,000 and change. It's pretty remarkable. Um, and per the direction that you adopted, uh, the finance director is our city treasurer, Kathy Orm, has been investing some of the trust money into CDs that yield a little better return so that next year we'll start to see more interest uh, coming off the trust to, that the library can put to use. Uh, so it's exciting and uh, again very grateful to the Zimmers for this legacy that they've left uh, to our library as well as the library in Mill Valley and Corte Madera. Uh, also wanted to uh, acknowledge that our city clerk, Jamie Carrillo, um, received a scholarship from the City Clerks Association in California for one of the trainings that she'll be attending as she pursues her certification as a, as a city clerk in California. And so uh, proud of her for doing that. Good job. Yeah, Jamie. great. Um, and, uh, and then I had a request to do an update a little bit on the project status of the East Sir Francis Drake a work that's going on. So I'm going to pass the baton to Public Works Director Julian Skinner so that he can give you a, a status update on that project. Great. Thank you. Yep. Dan, can I ask you just one thing about the Zimmer Trust? Do, are, is there a family um, that we can that uh, we can send a thank you or reach out to as a council or or is this gentleman by himself? I don't recall. He he was a widower. Um, there are some family members that are listed as, because they've been receiving 
some of the disbursement. I don't believe that they're children, but um, we hmm. could certainly send some a note there. Yeah. I think that'd be nice if we did that. I, I just yeah. We had sent. Um, now that it's had, final, we had made some phone calls, but there wasn't really a clear person. I actually hadn't seen these names until the most recent documents that came through. In the past, they've all said family members mm -hmm. that were receiving a disbursement, but the new one actually identifies who they are. So. Okay. Thanks. Hi. Good evening. Um, so the Easter Francis Drake project's been underway for about five weeks. Um, this is a project ultimately that will improve access to the Richmond Bridge um, for when they open the third lane on the bridge. Um, it's, there are three basic components to the project. The first is well underway. Anybody who's been traveling um, eastbound on 580, Sir Francis Drake, uh, we'll notice Gelati Brothers uh, have been out there past uh, the last Larkspur Landing intersection. Uh, the work they're doing now is essentially widening the street to push the merge um, a thousand feet closer to the bridge so that um, when everything's finished, the cars that stack up waiting to get to the bridge will be stacked up uh, past uh, Larkspur Landing Circle um, to alleviate some of the congestion. Uh, for our local streets, but also to help the commute towards the Richmond Bridge. So that basically so far has involved removing some pavement, putting in some new curb and gutter to align with where the widened road will go. Uh, we'll also get a new bike path out of that uh, because they have to shift the bike path over. So we'll get a new paved bike path uh, just outside of the curb. Um, and then over the next couple of weeks, they'll be paving back the widened section. And then also moving towards the middle of the street where they'll be uh, removing some of the existing island to accommodate the widened lanes, but also in some of the excess asphalt areas further down um, where it's just a painted median right now, that'll actually get converted into a fully landscaped median. So um, they're gonna do those two things uh, in such a way that they impact traffic as little as possible to try and get it to the point where they have the two lanes open, open as quickly as possible. Uh, they're thinking now early January uh, they may be finished with that portion of the work and have the merge actually pushed out. Um, then they'll fall back to the next portion of the project, which is improvements right at um, East Larkspur Landing Circle, sorry, the West Larkspur Landing Circle intersection and East Sir Francis Drake. They're going to do some pedestrian improvements there. They're going to pull out some of the curbs so the crossing length of the street is a little shorter to try and make it easier for pedestrian access um, in that location. It'll actually also help us retime the signal so that the traffic flows through there better. Um, and then the third and final component of the project is installing an interconnect uh, conduit. So this is basically going to be an empty pipe four inches in diameter that's going to go under the street. They're going to bore it um, basically from one side of the freeway to the other on East Sir Francis Drake to Sir Francis Drake. And then this will set us up in the future for adaptive signal control so that um, if we get grant funding in the future to link uh, the signals together on Sir Francis Drake and East Sir Francis Drake, we've already got uh, the infrastructure to accommodate um, the wires and everything that will be needed for that adaptive signal control in the future. So those are the three major components of the project. Um, as I mentioned, the first kind of biggest impact is uh, we hope to finish in early January, which is pushing the lane out. Um, the remainder of those other two portions are scheduled for probably the end of February to be finished. Um, and then when the weather gets a little better um, in early summer, they'll come back and do some of the paving uh, repairs at that time. Uh, a few more items that I want to uh, remind the council and the public about. One is that tomorrow evening, 6.30 to 8 o'clock, uh, CMPA and Central Rim Fire, and I think maybe County OES, so just going to be there, uh, are doing a fire preparedness meeting. It's going to be at the Corte de Madera Community Center, and uh, we encourage folks interested in that topic to attend. There'll be... Uh, some discussion about what you can do to make yourself uh, more prepared if we ever experience any of the disasters that occurred to the north or that we're now seeing on television down south. So, so Dan, um, the, the flyer says 6. Has it been changed to 6.30? I believe it's 6 to 7.30. 6 to 7.30, yeah. yeah. We need to fix our website. <laughs> That's not what our website says. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, it goes to this brochure. Okay. Okay. Just so want to I've make been sure corrected. before we went Thank you. Ahead. It's 6 yeah. to 7.30, and we will fix our website, which has the wrong time on it. Um, and then 
in addition, I wanted to remind the council and the public that the administrative offices will be closed to the public the week of December 25th. Um, Folks will see some activity here. In fact, we've scheduled quite a bit of interior maintenance for that week to occur at City Hall. So there will be employees in and around the building uh, taking care of things, but we will, uh, we will be closed. And the library will publish a closure schedule as well. They'll be closed some, if not all, of that week as well. Um, and then a reminder that your next meeting on the 20th is for uh, the purpose of transition of the mayor and the, also the swearing in of the council members who were reelected uh, this year. And I believe we'll be certifying the election results, right, Jamie? As well as uh, there'll probably be one or two simple consent items, but we'll keep it light. It'll be more about celebration. Um, and uh, I think Jamie probably has found in all the detailed notes that we have on how to run that meeting uh, that we will. We will roll out and make sure that it runs smoothly. With that, I will turn it back to you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Um, any questions for the city manager? Nothing? Just a couple questions, Julian, on uh, Sir Francis Drake. On the, on the infrastructure, the conduit that's going in to accommodate adaptive signal technology, um, we'll put that in. That's part of our project, the infrastructure. Uh, if and when we ever get around to putting in that technology, will that be done in conjunction with the county and their implementation of uh, similar technology on the rest of Sir Francis Drake? Um, yes, yeah, so in order to do that corridor properly, it's going to take the joint effort of a number of agencies. Yeah. Um, the Transportation Authority of Marin actually has applied for a grant for some of the funding uh, to go forward with adaptive uh, signals along that corridor, and so um, in doing that, they did discuss it with as far basically from the hub, so San Anselmo all the way through to the last um, intersection in East Sir Francis Drake is what the ultimate corridor could be. Mm -hmm. um, doing a grant application to start looking at where some of the funding might come from is the first step. There's obviously many steps along the way as far as um, being one adaptive signal who would ultimately control it. It has to live somewhere and somebody has to operate that as a corridor. Right. So there's, um, yeah, many questions down the down the road as far as how that might roll out and what it would look like. But okay. essentially, yeah, it would link um, every signal from the hub in San Anselmo through to the last one in uh, Larkspur Landing Circle. And I guess that's really the gist of my question is to make yep. sure all of that gets, because I think it's a great idea and it ought to be done. And I know it's part of what the, County is proposing for the rest of Sir Francis Drake. Do you have uh, an understanding about where that project is? I know they've put an EIR out. I think the EIR comment period is closed. And I actually thought I saw they may have been sued over the adequacy of the EIR. EIR. Do you know anything um, about that? Yeah, the, I don't know about a lawsuit. But um, yeah, the deadline for comments, uh, I believe, was today um, for oh, then, that. Then they would not have been sued yet. It would be pr premature. Yeah. Maybe it's just a threat. We're still asking questions on this. I have one. Yeah, please. You're finished. <clears throat> when you, uh, in regards to the first Larkspur Landing exit, which is phase two or uh, intersection, where the ferry terminal comes out, um, and you're talking about signaling and re examining the signals, does that involve then a traffic a signaling study of any? Yeah, so um, a signal study, a corridor study, actually was done as part of the project development okay. uh, for this, which is how they arrived at pushing the lanes a 1,000 feet when they looked at the, the whole corridor. And then also um, in that intersection specifically, uh, we're not adding lanes, but we're reassigning some lanes. So coming out of Larkspur Landing Circle, currently there's three lanes, only to one exit. turns right, yeah. one goes straight, one goes left. Those lanes will be reassigned. Um, and basically the signal study shows that by having two right turn lanes there, um, you can get that traffic through the signal quicker and it gives you more green time to East Sir Francis Drake. So no real concrete improvements there. The lanes stay the same, but by flipping some of the assignments around, you're able to make the signal run more efficiently. I'm, all, I'm just also curious of whether it's coordinated with the ferry um, schedule because, you know, of course there's a huge bolus of people that leave when the ferry arrives, but you know, between the ferry times, that there essentially is very few people exiting that parking lot. It It's not per se, um, but it does run on loops uh, and cameras, so it runs on demand. 
Okay. Um, and so it's always adapting to um, the traffic at that particular location. Mm -hmm. When we get into the next iteration of that, the adaptive corridor is when the intersections talk to each other and they look at queues and things like that. I um, see. But it's as intelligent as a standalone intersection can be as far as it looks at where the traffic is and then it adjusts the timing. Okay. It's just such an interesting intersection because it does have that big parking lot where there's hundreds of people who flood out in sort of in sections. But Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Great. Any other comments or questions? Uh, if not, we'll go on to council members, agenda item number six, council members' oral reports and comments. Do we have any oral reports? I do. Good. Go I have four items. Um, first is the Twin City Village. We celebrated our one-year anniversary. We had a nice article in the Marin IJ about the village. We now have over 50 members and 50 volunteers. And now we're going to start working with the Larkspur and Quarter Madeira libraries and start um, promoting their uh, senior programs in our monthly newsletter. So it's going to be nice to do that. Secondly, transportation of Marin had a safe routes to school meeting. Uh, the main concern was TAM can no longer fund the 147 crossing guards that exist in Marin. They can only afford uh, 50 through the Measure A. So after a long discussion, we're able to keep three out of our four crossing guards. The one that, um, that is not going to be funded is the one on Magnolia and Wiltshire. So what they do now have, TAM, they've got a program where they pay the school $4,000 if they find a volunteer to be the crossing guard. And then with that $4,000, they get trained and in equipment. So hopefully we'll find someone to volunteer for that section. Thirdly, um, I'm chairing the Marin Teen Girls Conference, March the 25th, 2018, and we found our keynote speaker. Her name is Pam Hamamoto. She um, and Barack Obama were both valedictorians together in the high school, and when during his um, presidency, he asked her to be the ambassador of the United Nations. She's now returned back to Ross, and she'll be the keynote speaker for these girls. So it's going to be really special. Fourthly, it's Larkspur Chamber of Commerce. Tomorrow, December the 7th, um, they're going to have a Larkspur Chamber of Commerce holiday mixer at the Bon Air Shopping Center throughout all the stores. So hopefully you can make that. That's from 5 to 7. And then secondly, December the 14th, uh, the Corner Madeira Chamber has invited the Larkspur Chambers to join them from 5.30 to 7 on the 14th at the Corner Madeira Inn. That's all I have. I think you have to move this part of it, because yeah, I can walk down the street. Um, well, thank you for that, uh, for that report. You actually stole my thunder, because I was going to mention that uh, the, the uh, Chamber of Commerce items as well. Sorry. So I'm glad Next you got, time, you're I'm on. I'm glad you got to it. You're on. So that deprives me of anything that I was going to say during my, <laughs> my oral report uh, this evening. So we'll close agenda item number six, and we'll go to agenda item number seven for public hearings. Uh, we have none scheduled for tonight. Uh, so we'll close agenda item number seven. We'll move on to agenda item number eight, business items. And I see that once again, we have none scheduled for that. So with that, this may not be the shortest meeting on record, but it's close. <laughs> we'll go to agenda item number nine, which is to adjourn the meeting. Do I have a motion? I'll adjourn? make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in All favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The meeting is passed, or the uh, motion is passed and the meeting is adjourned.